So let's start with the chassis, engine, and axle buildup area, because that's where it all begins. Western Star trucks are built to last, no matter how hard the job. And nowhere is that more apparent than on the Portland truck plant's 1,200 foot long chassis assembly line. It runs the length of the entire building. Every custom built truck chassis starts here with a pair of rugged frame rails that have holes pre-punched for the components that each customer specifies. Then technicians add heavy duty cross members, brackets, spring hangers, and air tanks before installing the axles and suspension. Here you can see all the frame rails lined up outside per serial number ready to come in for assembly. You can tell by all the different lengths and thicknesses how many different trucks we can build here in one day. These frame rails are punched out, not drilled, by a computer diagram, then they are flanged, then they are shot peened, and then they're e-coated. The shot peening is like a swarm of very tiny little steel BBs that hit all around the outside of each hole, both sides, and what that does is it reduces stress risers in it to give you a very long frame life. You can see here behind me, they're assembling the frames by sticking them inside a jig, placing the cross members inside, and then the hydraulic cylinders will fold up that frame into the cross members. One of the big questions we get all the time with Western Star is why don't you use a huck fastener? Well, if you look at this, it's a very simple piece and it's got only two pieces to it. You also can't hook onto it with a wrench. The only way to install these is with a special tool. So when you're in the field, how are you gonna hook onto this with a wrench? You can't. So at Western Star, what we use is a grade eight fine threaded cap screw, two hardened washers, and a steel lock nut. As you can see, it's easy to get on here with a wrench. It's easy to get on here with a wrench. You can undo it from either end. That's four pieces versus two. It's gonna take a little bit longer to install, but it's gonna give you value in the field because you can undo it and you can replace it. So anytime you need to work on your chassis, you do not need to grab a cutting torch, which is the only way to take off a huck fastener. And you can get on this with a wrench and a ratchet and undo it. So that gives you better value in the field so you can take it apart and fix it anytime. For our tractors, what we do is we taper our frame rail by cutting out a piece and then re-welding it so that it's seamless. Then we recess these fasteners inside the flange of the rail. What that does is it gives a seamless ramp for the trailer to glide up on. Our competitors use fasteners where the heads are sitting up, and when you ramp into a trailer with that, bam, 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 causing damage to the front of the trailer. At Western Star, we locate the front cab mount outboard as far as we possibly can on the cab in order to give a much more stable ride. Our competitors put the cab mount inboard, requiring them to have a transverse torque rod on the back of the cab. Our cab mount is out so far that the cab will not tilt side to side. It gives a much better ride. The further in you put the cab mount towards the rails on the truck, the tippier the cab actually gets. So inside here, in this casting, is a little pin. And that pin locates inside a hole in this pipe. When it's torqued down, this cab mount structure actually becomes another cross member holding the frame rails together and reducing flex at the power unit. We locate our removable front tow pin inside the front closing cross member, giving it extra strength. We have our pin removable so that you can hook the loop of a cable or a chain inside the cross member and then drop the pin. The pin is rated at a 110,000 pound line pull on a 45 degree angle because as you know, it's very difficult to line up two trucks straight with each other in order to pull one out. Here's how Western Star holds up their looms and harnesses on all rails, on all models of trucks. We take this steel standoff that is threaded on the end and we weld it onto the frame or onto the cross member of the chassis. Then we use a rubber coated 
steel zinc coated P-clamp and use a steel lock nut on the outside. The Western Star system holds the harness away from the frame by a large amount. So what happens is when you get road salt and dirt all piling up on top of the harness, it just falls away and down. These are still going to be on your truck 30 years from now, and you can take this nut off, and you can undo the clamp, you can work on the harness, and you can put it all back on. These are gonna be with you 30 years from now. This is the beginning of the Western Star axle line. You can see the rear axles lined up, ready to go in to get their suspension brackets welded. We are certified by every axle builder to put on our own suspension bracket. The reason that we put our own brackets on the housings is we have so many different options in suspensions with Western Star, we cannot get all of the axle manufacturers to weld on these brackets and get them to the truck plant in a timely fashion to be able to build the truck. Behind me, you can see the axle assembly line. They're getting their axle shafts installed, brake spiders, brake chambers, brake drums, hubs, ABS sensors, and they're getting their springs put on. We don't use a rubber bushing, and we don't use a flat straight pin. What this does is it reduces all the lateral movement between the spring and the shackles of the truck. That means you don't get any clunking when you turn the wheel backwards or forwards, and it lasts much longer than a rubber bushing. If you want the truck to last 30 years, this is the kind of thing we're gonna put on a Western Star. Does it cost a little more? Yes, it does. Western Star also uses rubber bump stops on the front axle. So when your spring comes up and hits the frame, you've got a rubber cushion in there so you get a much better feel when you're driving off-road. The last thing to be installed on the axles are the drive line. Every time you order a truck with a different wheelbase or a different model, you're gonna have different drive lines on. So these are as individual as the frame rails are. So it's a great logistics feat to get all these drive lines exactly the right length and exactly the right time to the right place in order to get a truck built. That's some serious customization. Now assembled, it's time for the custom chassis to be prepared for painting. After a trip through the paint booth, the chassis goes through ovens where the paint is cured at up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 90 degrees Celsius. Now that's hot. After a cool down period, technicians get to work on hanging the engine package and making the necessary connections before installing the fuel tanks and batteries. One of the great things at Western Star is engine options. We have our own proprietary series of engines, 16 liter, 15 liter, and 13 liter from Detroit Diesel. We also offer the tried and true Cummins ISX. Now we also have emission level options. If you want to have an off-highway truck that will never see the road, you can still get our proprietary Series 60 engine in a Tier 3 off-highway emission rating. No diesel particulate filter, no EGR, just a simple turbo and a muffler. Behind me is our 16 liter Detroit diesel, 600 horsepower, 2050 foot-pounds of torque, and with that turbo compounder behind the turbo, 53 horsepower at full boost. It is truly a great engine. We're here in the cooling module assembly area. This is where we assemble radiators, charge air coolers, power steering coolers as one module. We are the last OEM to build a copper brass radiator for engine cooling. The reason we still use a copper brass radiator, although it's a little heavier, it has much better heat transfer and it's repairable in the field with simple flux and solder. So if you're out in the oil field and you punch a stick through the side of your radiator, you can fix it. Also, the tanks are steel bolted gasketed tanks. So if the gasket leaks, all you do is you take out all the bolts, you take the tank off, replace the gasket, and away you go. Now, if you have a plastic tank aluminum radiator, if it causes a leak at the gasket, you have to take that radiator and throw it away. 
Now for highway applications, we will approve plastic tank aluminum radiators to save weight. But for anything 10% or greater off highway, copper brass is still the way to go. We had an 1875 square inch copper brass radiator with 500 horsepower engine running constantly at 104 degrees ambient temperature with the hood closed, constant. No other OEM can perform like that. We are the king of cooling. At Western Star, we mount our fuel tanks on steel J brackets. The steel J bracket holds the tank up in the air. The strap does not hold the tank up. Then what we do at Western Star is we use a wide steel strap in order to hold the tank onto the J bracket. Now the problem a lot of our competitors have is called tank roll. And what happens with tank roll is the tank will roll inside the band. So the filler neck comes lower and lower to the road. Or worse yet, it rolls onto the other side and you can't stick a nozzle in it. And here is a sample of a competitor's fuel tank isolator. This is the rubber that goes in between the tank and the strap. As you notice, ours is much wider than theirs. So we use a wider strap for greater strength and then to increase the PSI on the tank to prevent it from rolling, we use a serrated isolator in here. You can see all the little slits that are cut in it and that's the same theory as the lady's high-heeled shoe with that heel on the ground increasing the PSI. So we've got wider bracket, serrated rubbers, and steel J brackets that will hold that tank up in the roughest conditions. Does this cost a little more? Yeah, it does.